Hey guys, today I'm bringing you the full review of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play 4G. This is a 4G device which runs off of AT&T's HSPA Plus network and it is available now for $49.99 with a new two-year contract. So this is the world's first PlayStation certified phone and the reason it has that certification is because of the built-in gamepad which you can slide and we can see right there. So we have some Sony Ericsson PlayStation certified logo right there. And then you can, you can see the handset right here, which has a 4-inch screen. It is multi-touch and capacitive, and it features an FWVGA resolution, which is 854 down by 480 across. So that gives you a different widescreen ratio, as you can see. So this is good for watching movies and also playing games. So it's not the usual 800 by 480 that most phones give us. So with that widescreen display ratio, like I said, it'll give you some really nice colors. So you can see the vibrancy of the display here. And it has 16 million colors on it, so it should be able to produce some nice and juicy colors. And the downside on the display is that it does not include the mobile Vrabia engine that is found in the Xperia Arc and the Xperia Ray. So while the pixel density is high, the colors are sharp and the viewing angles are good as you can see. But the screen is average at best, so it doesn't really have any spectacular qualities like the iPhone 4's clarity or the Samsung Galaxy S2's contrast and color production. So taking a look at the phone itself, we can see that the front is pretty clean. You have the screen itself, some Sony Ericsson branding, the front facing camera with VGA resolution, so that's good for self portraits and also video chat. And then you have the sensors right here for proximity and light. At the bottom you can see the physical buttons which are back, home, menu, and search. Now I'm not a big fan of these buttons because I'm a big fan of capacitive buttons since they are so easy to press you can lightly tap them. Whereas these you really got to push them hard to get some responsiveness out of them. And at the same time these are not backlit so the issue is if you are in a dark setting you probably won't be able to see them very well. Now on the side here you can see the volume rocker. It is placed pretty awkwardly because you have these shoulder left and right buttons here but it's still pretty easy to press and it gives a nice clicky responsiveness. Towards the back you can see the AT&T branding and Sony Ericsson as well and this is the Cobalt Blue model which is exclusive to AT&T here in the USA. Now the back is glossy so it does tend to pick up fingerprints and a couple scratches as you can see. And you can see the 5 megapixel camera with a single LED flash. This has built in autofocus and the secondary microphone. Right up here you have the power button which is pretty easy to press if you can find it because it is kind of flush with the back cover and it has a notification LED light right there which might seem a little out of place but the actual LED is kind of bright so you can't see it anywhere and finally at the bottom you have this nice sort of chrome accent with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the micro USB charger and if we slide this open you can see the gamepad with the d-pad right here the settings two capacitive joysticks which are actually very easy to use and it has this sort of rubber inlay which helps you know if you're leaving the actual surface or not and actually works pretty well you have the select button the start button and then the square triangle circle and X now this uses a hinge mechanism which is actually pretty sturdy so once you push it up about halfway then it just slides up itself so it is sort of mechanical but it works really well and it's very smooth as you can see now in terms of specs, the phone itself features a 1 GHz Snapdragon processor with Adreno 205 graphics for increased gaming performance. So while this is not a high-end phone in terms of having a dual-core processor or real 4G because I don't consider HSPA Plus to be real 4G, it definitely is a good contender out there and performance-wise it does perform pretty well. Now if we take off the back cover here, you can see a couple of things. You can see the 1500 milliamp hour battery which is pretty good for this kind of device doesn't have a large screen and it is single core so it will get you about a day of usage out of it including gaming then if we pop this back on you can see that we have some speaker notches here right at the bottom here and here so that gives you some stereo speaker so while you are playing games or listening to music or watching a movie you will get some pretty good sound out of this now let me pop this off once again and within here you will get an 8 gigabyte micro SD card included but you can expand that up to 32 gigabytes and then you have the sim card right there 
And in terms of connectivity, like I said, this runs off of AT&T's HSPA Plus so-called 4G network. And it also has 802.11b, G, and N Wi-Fi networks, as well as Bluetooth. So a phone is really worthless to you unless it can make good calls. I placed a couple of test calls just to see how it would do, and the recipients of those calls said I sounded loud and clear, so the microphones on this must be pretty good. But on the other hand, I heard the recipients with a little bit of a tinniness to them, so I'd say that call quality was average. Now in terms of reception, you can see right there, I have two bars of HSPA plus connectivity right now, and I'm about a mile mile and a half from the actual strip of Las Vegas where there are several AT&T towers to keep up with the high demand so the phone itself does not have great connectivity in terms of holding a signal but it does do the job just fine so it will be able to get one or two bars in areas that other phones will get three or four so a little bit disappointing on that front now here we have the calling interface which is actually pretty simple you have your number pad right here you have your call and save you have phone, call log, contacts, and favorites. So it's actually pretty simple, and it's the way it should be to make a phone call. So in terms of 4G speeds, I want to do a quick speed test right here to show you the actual speeds I'm getting. And this is in Las Vegas. So we'll open up the speed test right here. And as you can see, we have two bars, now three bars, of H+, which is HSPA+. The app is finding the closest server. And let's let it do that, and let's begin the test. So let's move this aside and I want to show you the speeds that I'm getting on T-Mobile 3G which we have right here. So we have 275 megs down and 169 megs up. This is on T-Mobile 3G with one bar. So right here we can see that AT&T is getting around about 1.20, 1.21 down. And the upload seems to be screwing up just a little bit. There we go. So it's under half a meg and let's let that finish so anyways guys what I'm trying to say is that AT&T's HSPA plus network really isn't performing the way it should or the way I expected it to but these speeds are really enough for average web browsing so the Xperia Play 4G is running Android 2.3.3 gingerbread with their timescape overlay on top which you can see right here so what this does is it gives it some aesthetic features such as animations when opening the app drawer it also gives you some custom widgets which you can see right here and it also really gives you a nice visual eye candy so let me show you some of the widgets that we have right here so you have the on and off for GPS roaming sound Wi-Fi photos and videos picture frame you also have some PlayStation pocket alternatives and if you open up the app drawer, you can see some of the animations there. And you can see the way you can arrange your apps. So it's not really a huge overlay on top of the phone. You can see that the dock right here is a little bit different. It's more accessible in terms of what you can put down there. But they've done a pretty good job, and the phone itself actually performs really nicely. Now something I want to point out is in terms of AT&T bloatware, something that actually surprised me is while the apps here you can see are sort of installed on the device if I were to tap on AT&T code scanner it redirects me to the market if I want to download it so that's a good option because if you don't you can click this and exit out of the app and uninstall that so while you do have some bloatware on here you can easily remove it if you don't want it so I'm glad that Sony Ericsson and AT&T have gone that route so performance on the device is actually pretty good for a 1 gigahertz processor you can see I have a live wallpaper running in the background it's actually very fluid throughout the home screen. Everything opened up pretty rapidly. And then you can see we can scroll up and down really nicely. So I want to show you the browser right here. Let's open up a website. Let's open up Phone Arena, which is a browser intensive website. Now before we do that, I want to point out the keyboard itself, actually pretty narrow keyboard. So it's kind of hard to type on. So you might want to do it in the landscape mode just because the keys are more spaced out and more evenly spaced out so they're easier to type on so it did take me a little bit to get used to this narrow keyboard so I wish that Sony Ericsson would have found a way to incorporate the original gingerbread keyboard and the reason I think that it was done is because this new widescreen aspect ratio gives it a much thinner profile when in portrait mode so here we are loading phone arena let's have that load up completely and you can see this is a pretty browser intensive website so it has flash everywhere 
around here. You can see some ads there. And the performance on this is actually pretty nice. You can see pinch to zoom is pretty smooth. You can double tap to zoom in. Just like that. And I'm actually pretty impressed because the Adreno 205 graphics do a great job with rendering as well. So you can zoom in this way as well. And it does it pretty nicely. And the site hasn't loaded up completely so you can't see some flash right there. And the way that it performs is actually pretty nice. If you can zoom in there. You can see how smooth that is. So I'm actually pretty pleased with the device for being a single core processor. The actual performance reminds me most of the Nexus S, which does a great job in performing, even though it's a sort of outdated phone. So most people will be interested to see how gaming performance is on this device, seeing as this is such a gaming-centric device. So there's actually three ways you can do this. First of all, you can slide up the screen and you're prompted to the Xperia Play Launcher where you can see the games you have installed. So you have all these games right here pre-installed except for Battlefield and Minecraft. And if you click on Get Games, it also prompts you to a nice catalog with a whole list of games that you can buy, although some of these are free. And all these are made to work with the actual gamepad itself. Now if we close on out of here, you can see that we also have PlayStation Pocket App, which features some older PlayStation games and the one that's pre-installed with the actual phone itself is Crash Bandicoot which we have right here so we'll hit continue and I'll show you some quick gameplay on the device itself so let's load this up and you can see the graphics on there are actually pretty nice the only thing is that it doesn't use up the whole screen since this was made for the original PlayStation you can see it's very smooth and the actual controllers work pretty well And overall it's actually pretty pleasing, it's very easy to use, and it's much better than the actual touchscreen that I'm used to on an iPhone or another Android device, so it's really pleasant to have these physical controls there. So I've been using the Xperia Play for emulators, and here we have SNESoid, and this really shows you that the controller can be used with several emulators, which really opens up the door to hundreds of games. So here we have Super Mario Bros. And these are easily be playable with the actual control pad, which is really nice because setup is super simple. All you have to do is map the actual controllers here to the gamepad, and you're good to go. So I'll show you a quick one right here of Super Mario Bros. 3. So I'll show you a little bit of gameplay, and this is what I've been doing most because it's really enjoyable to play those games from your past. So as you can see, it's very smooth, no lag at all, it's super playable, and most importantly, the actual controller does a great job, so everything works just fine. And it is really a pleasant experience, and this is where I see the most potential in terms of gaming, because really it's only limited to what the developers want to create for the actual device. So I think that's enough for that, and let's close that out. So if you were to pick up this phone, not only will you get the phone and some included goodies within the pack, you'll also get this multimedia dock right here. So this is exclusive to the AT&T model. This is a glossy piano black one. It has some rubber down here to prevent it from skidding across the table. And then you have the actual micro USB charging port and an audio out. And this simply works by placing it down here and attaching the headphone jack and the micro USB charger. As you can see, this will actually prompt it to go into alarm mode. So it really does make a nice dock. And this comes free of charge when picking it up from AT&T. So my overall thoughts on the Xperia Play 4G are definitely positive. I was impressed with the handset and the overall performance. Now, it might not be the thinnest or the fastest or the lightest phone out there, but it's definitely out of the market for people that either want a game or people that want a cheap but good smartphone. So anyone out there who wants a gaming device, this is definitely for you. But for someone who might not be using it, it still makes a good handset just because at 50 bucks, you're getting a great deal in terms of performance. Screen is average. Performance is actually pretty great. And I can see anyone using this device if they get used to it. So thanks a lot for watching my first review on an actual device. I'd like to say thanks to Sony Ericsson for sending out the products for reviewing purposes. And also to AT&T for letting me use their network for the time being. Anyways guys, please stay tuned for more of my reviews. Cheers.